everyone, welcome back to the Growing Together podcast with me, Sunny Vasquez. And me, Cesar Santos. And in today's episode, we are going to be talking about living and learning through failure. Um, failure is a word that like I hate because it's supposed to be like, you're supposed to learn through like failing and mm-hmm. you're supposed to, and you do, but it's so, it's got such a negative connotation yeah yeah it's just yeah. like when you say oh man i failed it's not like oh yeah i failed um which it should be because you learn through failure but it's it's been something that i've struggled with a lot in like my personal life and my career what would you say your experience is definitely with it? definitely i've struggled with it too you know like from growing up as kids doing like dumb things and like you know whether you break your arm or you know physically or like mentally fail at something like definitely have struggled to- <laughs> definitely. Mm-hmm. um i kind of wanted to dive deep into our own failures and the impacts that have had on us as well as how we got through and navigated life through these failures so one of like my first questions for you is can you recall like the first time that you felt like immense failure that you failed and it, how it impacted you or how you even like got up from it you know Man. It's a hard question. That is. <laughs> to think that is, that, back. That is a pretty difficult question. Um, right, can you start off? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, well, I think, think, I'm trying to think. But like, No, it is a hard yeah. question. I think it's even hard for me. Failure, man. Um, the first time I can remember failing. Um, oh, I have a good one. Because it was a legit like failure in regards to school. When I was in fourth grade... I was pretty bad at math for some reason. Like, I'm a smart individual, and I actually went on to take, like, very advanced classes and, like, you know, higher-level math classes. But in fourth grade, I could not pass math to save my life. Like, I was failing math. And I was so disappointed in myself because I also didn't really like school that much. I was, like, really annoyed with the fact that I had to go. And not because I didn't like learning, but I felt like i was like this is pointless and i also kind of felt like i didn't relate to other kids at some points uh but yeah i was i was legitimately failing lap failing lap. i was legitimately failing math and like they had parent teacher conferences to see like how my parents could help me i don't even end up i don't even really remember how i ended up passing fourth grade math um but i remember feeling so bad about it because i don't know if your parents ever did this but my parents would sit with me at the dinner table to do my homework um, when I was young to make sure the homework got done. If I didn't understand anything, they would try to help me. Yeah. But my parents weren't really good at explaining things. So it would probably end up with me crying because I didn't oh. understand and they didn't know how to explain it. Um, so I think I remember feeling really stupid. And that's something I kind of carried with me like for the rest of my life is like whenever I failed, I kind of just felt like an imbecile. Well, that's not the case. Like, everyone fails, so I shouldn't, like, beat myself down. But I just remember feeling, like, so dumb. And, like, feeling like my parents probably thought that I was so stupid. (laughs) But, you know, they didn't think that. But I definitely felt, like, kind of down on myself. Um, But also in fourth grade, not that much mattered to me. So I think it's different than how I feel when I fail now, you know? Yeah, as as an adult, you know? Yeah, when you fail as an adult, it's it's a different kind of hurt <laughs> yeah no it's um you feel like all the different levels of uh of grief yeah uh, no literally you do it feels like a whole like grief process here's so here's to make the question easier if you can't think of like the first time like you remember failing what's like a more recent time that when how you navigated through like getting back up and going pursuing what you wanted i would say oh man i mean i would say like Caesar just never fails. No, I do. I do. It's just there's a lot of topics, and I don't know which one I want to talk about, but um, there's a lot. Um, but so I mean, it's the I, I was, opposite. You fail all the time. And but yeah, but then I learn, I guess, right? Yeah. Um, oh, your throat. Yeah, I don't know just, why. I did you drink that. some water. You drink some water. Oh, I think. Um, oh no, but I mean, I while you were talking about school, you made you made you made me remember like all the times that I did like fail in school. I was in we were el- just talking about this the other day. 
What do you mean? The um, standardized exams. Oh, yeah. No, that's what I mean. That's that's literally the first thing. Well, not the other day. Yesterday. Yeah, yesterday. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, have, I, have I broken off on you? <laughs> yeah. Because <laughs> I said the other day all the time. Caesar says the other day <laughs> all the time. And he could actually be referring to the other day or five months ago or five years ago. <laughs> you never know. This was the other day. <laughs> technically, right? But anyways, yeah, I know. Standardized exams were like a thing. Uh, when I was in high school, like you couldn't graduate high school if you didn't pass your, um, they were called, uh, you said your proficiency. proficiency exams. Yeah. And like there's English, math, I think, I think they even had science, yeah, English, math, science, and reading. I might be missing one. No, writing? No. Writing and writing. Yeah. Writing. And, uh, yeah, if you didn't pass them, you could get all, you could have all of your school credits. You could have a 4.0 GPA, but then not graduate. Which is so stupid. Yeah, because uh, not walk. You would you would get a uh, you would get like a certificate of uh, attendance or something like that. It's weird. Which doesn't mean anything yeah, for some that. people, I yeah. guess. So, uh, but yeah, they got they got rid of them like a few years after I graduated. And so, like anybody who didn't graduate, like uh, immediately, like just became a high school graduate as long as they had their um, GPA, like their um, their credits. credits. Yeah, that's stuff. all that mattered. Um, but I remember failing, like, I think it was, yeah, writing writing and reading. I had to retake reading a few times. And then writing was, like, the one I had to take, like, three times. And that was the one that was, like, I was super stressed out about because I need to pass this. You know, I need to, I need to you know, be proficient at writing according to this, yeah. according to this standardized test. But, yeah, I failed, like, multiple times. Uh, and then I passed, like, luckily. So, <laughs> luckily. But, uh, yeah, it just, um, that was a, that was a, I mean, that's it's funny because I get, I remember I told you, I get nightmares about, like, it's, I have a recurring nightmare where I, I, I feel like I didn't pass, I didn't graduate, and I'm back yeah. in school, and I'm, like, having to re, re uh, I, like, flunked out or something, so, um, I think you remember you told me that one of your friends also has a recurring Yeah, I think someone told me like that, that they had, like, a dream But maybe like it's because that. of the failure, I don't know, maybe I have it because, like, I feel like I failed, and maybe every time I fail every now and then, like, I get that nightmare. Yeah, I I passed, luckily, well, they weren't called proficiencies in Florida. Um, they had, like, the FCAT, and then I think they had, like, FSA was another one that they started, like, I don't know if it was before I graduated or after. Yeah. Um, That we had to take. Um, luckily, I passed all of those, or at least I graduated. <laughs> so, they never really, like, I never really cared about my scores because I figured I was going to pass. Um, But, yeah, it was... It was, I mean, I, I know the fear of, like, not passing. And yeah. obviously, you wanted to graduate. Um, there was an AP exam that I failed when I was in, I think it was my senior year of high school. I took AP literature. And my teacher, his name was Mr. Carey. He was the greatest teacher ever. Such a good teacher. I love this man. So passionate, like one of those great teachers. And um, I did so well in his class. And he was like, he really thought that I was going to pass this AP exam. Yeah. You know, it's to get the college credit. Like you can pass the class and not pass the exam and still graduate because you're just trying to get college credit for the class. And I thought I was like a shoe in like I really did. And like the day of the AP exam, what came, I think you had to do like three essays on that exam. And one was like um, about poetry. Um, I don't know. It was like dissecting poetry or something like that. Um, but I thought I did good. Like I took the exam. I thought I did good. You get the scores the summer after and I didn't pass. I got the scores are rated on a scale of like one to five. So five is the highest score. So you have to get a three to pass. So three, four, and five are passing scores. I got a two and I was like, what the heck? And I felt so bad because I felt like I disappointed this teacher. Aww. And I told him, but they can see, they get to see the scores too. They can look up what their students got. And he was like, I would have bet money that you were going to pass. He was like, it's okay. It was a hard exam this year. And like a lot of people he thought were going to pass yeah. didn't pass. And um, yeah, and I was like, that failure, like I wasn't like so hard on myself about it, but I did feel like I let a teacher down who believed in me. And I was like, Mr. Carragher tried. I tried really hard. And, like, you knew the type of student I was. So it sucked. But, like, obviously, it wasn't the end of the world because, like, I was going to be going to college the next 
semester and ironically the college classes like the exams you have in the college classes are nothing like ap exams like the questions i ask like it's just so stupid the way that stuff is but i won't get into it but i do remember feeling like i had let that teacher down because like yeah. he was such a great teacher and he did his job so well but even doing your job so well like sometimes the exams are just too like you can't predict how hard they're gonna be yeah no i mean it's uh i mean from Especially with tests, like they change them every year and then you get nervous and then you feel like you made it messed up. You just reminded me of something yeah. too. Um, me and Caesar were literally just talking about this yesterday of like standardized tests and then the ACT and the SAT. I took the SAT three times and I got the same score three times. And then I took the ACT, I think twice and I got the same score twice wow. um but i was telling my dad about it because obviously like i was applying for colleges i needed to get a good score to get in and i was telling my dad that i just really don't like i don't do well with these standardized tests like i'm a smart individual but like these standard yeah. standardized tests are not my thing and um <laughs> my dad meant well by this so i don't, don't want him to think anyone to think that he's like rude or a bad person because he's not this is just how my dad is <laughs> but he looked at me we were sitting in like a denny's in my hometown he was like sunny i thought you were smart <laughs> and i was like i am <laughs> i am smart but i just can't like these tests don't like they don't they're not a measure of your intelligence they really aren't and like that's something that can be so hurtful is like putting your worth on like these tests yeah. because they really don't measure your intelligence like i know a bunch of insanely smart people that don't do well in standardized tests and a lot of it is either comes from like test anxiety or just the questions are stupid like again they're not a measure of intelligence um but i remember my dad telling me that i'm like i am smart i just i can't do well on these things and like they also don't consider like other factors like i probably could have studied a little bit more for the sat and act but like i had a lot of stuff going on like i had work <laughs> i had all the stuff to do like you know they expect a lot of the high school kids <laughs> <laughs> but yeah it was that was time where i was like hot damn I've disappointed my parents already. I'm not even in college yet. <laughs> oh, man. You know, it's funny. Um, I just thought of uh, another topic for failure in regards to like another another experience. Uh, pe well, another situation that I had. <laughs> it was actually one of the first jobs that I applied to um, in high school still. So they were opening up the first five guys in Vegas and like a group of friends of mine we all went to go apply because like it was like oh you know it was a burger joint obviously like don't get me wrong their burgers and fries are really good and like we all applied and like i think out of five of us only three of the three of them got the got a job a position there but i just remember uh during the uh, interview process i felt like i did good and then i was like oh yeah i'm gonna kind of get the job get this and then it's like no <laughs> <laughs> we regret to inform <laughs> and then and then there's another situation that i had where um it was I had, towards the end of high school i was again i was looking for work and uh, what i decided to do was uh oh no because uh this thing this damn cable talk about failure and that cable fails all the time <laughs> <laughs> but uh i decided to like drive around and like apply to all like the dealerships because i really wanted an automotive job after school after after high school like working either like lube tech or whatever starting starting out as a lube tech is like your first that just sounds weird <laughs> yeah it's a just, tech. They're called, i mean that's, that's what it was called before i don't know if it's called something else now but yeah lube tech it's just someone who does oil changes that's all you do um and i was like, content with doing that i was like that's cool i want to do that and I literally applied to every single dealership I can think of. I went to, I went in person, you know, asked for an application, filled it out. Um, this is before like they, because they didn't have anything online back then. Yeah. I don't know why. It was 2011, you know. But yeah, I did all that and no one called me back. Not one out of all the eight dealerships I went to. Not one even for an uh, interview. That's so sad. I had, fam I had family members that would tell me that the reason why was because of my hair. Oh, yeah, I, I, I had really long hair in high school. Um. If I can find a picture, I'll put it right here. You should. <laughs> and uh, <laughs> so for those of you watching, like, yeah, I had really long hair. I just, I just had, I liked the long hair I had, but and then I got a cut, and then I got a job after that. So I don't know if that. I got a job. It, so. I don't know if correlation means causation. Yeah, I don't think so. But yeah. um, yeah, when I was um applying to colleges, I think I started applying to colleges like you apply like you like late junior year so you can get your acceptance like your senior year and i had applied to i think five schools and i really wanted to go out of state for college so i applied to university of southern california 
UCLA and UC Berkeley. And then I, I put like my safety schools were going to be UF and FSU. Mm-hmm. And I actually applied to FSU pretty late, like in the game. And um, yeah, because I was like, oh, I'm not going to end up going here. I'm going to go to one of these yeah. school, California schools. I got denied from all of them. And I was so, well, not all of like, I got denied from all the California schools. Mm-hmm. And then I got I got into UF and FSU. And I was like, well, these are my only choices. I really felt like I failed too. And then I was like rethinking like everything I did in high school and how I should have tried harder and like all of this stuff. Because like at the time I was like, where you go to college like really matters and all this yeah. nonsense. Um, and I was like, well, I guess I'm going to have to go to FSU. And because I didn't want to go to UF. I, I don't like UF's campus or so like. Ugh. You had a chance to visit it? Oh, yeah, I went yeah. to a cheer camp there when oh, I was in okay. high school. Um, And, yeah, I just I wasn't really in love with UF. And then, like, I had a coach that went to FSU, and we also had a tournament in Tallahassee for flag football, and he, like, gave us a tour of the campus. And it's just beautiful. And, uh, honestly, like, I'm glad yeah. I went there. So, you know, everything happens for a reason. Um, But, yeah, I definitely felt like I felt so stupid because I had friends getting into these great schools. Mm. I had friends who got into USC. I had friends who got into UCLA. Well, like, just some really good, like, colleges. And I was like, wow, I wasn't good enough. I didn't try hard enough. I should have worked harder. And I was really beating myself up about, about it because people tell you so much how much college matters and which school you go to matters. And, like, then another thing was, like, we had our senior award ceremony. I didn't get a single award. Um... And like, granted, my like graduating class was probably like eight hundred something, so yeah. not everyone's gonna get an award. It's like for like you know the elite. But I thought I was a smart individual, and I was like, a lot of my friends got awards, and I was just like, "Dang, Sunny, you're so stupid." Um, you're not dumb. Don't say that. <laughs> but yeah, I mean, a lot of times too, I think it's how like um, how much we not rely, but like we put a lot of space i guess in our mind on these things of like how much they matter yeah like colleges or like education and that stuff does matter but it shouldn't be the only thing that matters and i think that contributes to how we feel when we fail um it's like how much that thing matters to you and at the time like college really mattered to me because especially because all my friends were going to these great schools um so it makes the failure a little bit harder and like how do you get back up um, obviously I ended up going to FSU and I ended up having a great time. Um, but it also led to a lot more failures in my life once I got to college. I remember, um, there was this class and I used to not speak about this cause I was so ashamed. I, I think I didn't even tell you for a while. Um, there was this class, I think it was called Financial Management of a Firm, and it was basically an accounting class. As a marketing major, any business major has to take these courses. They have to take two accounting classes and basically this third accounting class called Financial Management of Firm, but the two accounting classes are managerial accounting and financial accounting. And I barely passed those. Like, I got C's in those because those classes were hard. And I also was taking them online because it worked better with my schedule. Like, I took some in-person classes, mm-hmm. but then others online because I worked a lot. And um, then I took this financial management firm after I passed, like, the two accounting classes. And the first semester that I took it, I think I failed it. And so I was like, oh, I'm going to have to take this class again. And so I enrolled in it, I think, the following summer. And I was like, I'm not going to pass it, so I'm going to drop it. So I dropped the course. And then the third time I took it was like the last semester of my senior year. So I was like, I have to pass pass this to graduate. And I was so scared because it really could have gone either way. Um, And I didn't end up passing it. I think I got like a B or maybe a C. Um, But... I felt so stupid for having to take it three times and like I remember emailing the teacher of that class and I was like look like I don't understand your course like I'm trying but like I don't have a lot of time to study I'm working full-time he's like well it sounds like you just have too much on your plate and you need to get some of it off of it I'm like that's not an option dude like I need to keep all of this on my plate because I need to stay on this track and I was like you guys don't understand um I ended up passing it, but I did feel so stupid because I'm like, how could I not pass this course? Like, how could I not, like, 
it's just a college class. How, how am I that dumb? And it wasn't even like, looking back, it wasn't even that I was dumb. It's just that it required a lot of time that I did not have at the time. So yeah. I, like, the lectures were like three hours in order to be able to understand, like, the homework. And I mean, I ended up spending a lot of time studying so I could pass the course, but um, it was difficult. And I was ashamed, Damn. which is why I didn't tell you about it for the longest no, time. No, I, I remember. I remember you, it took you a long time for you to tell me that. Like, I was like, wait, what? You have, you're taking this class three times now? Yeah. Yeah. Especially because I was paying for it three yeah. times, too. Like, that's the thing. I was paying for the class three times. I don't think my parents ever knew that I took it three times, either. Well, if they're listening now, they Now know. they do. And they know where my money went. <laughs> <laughs> Taking a class three times. Um, but I consider those to be, like, minuscule failures or, like, just tiny failures. Yeah. Like, those aren't, like, the ones that, like, really disrupted my life, I'd say. Um, they have been some ones that, like, really, like threw me off the edge you know yeah do you want to talk about this <laughs> if you don't have to i was gonna ask you were there any like for you that like really just yeah so there was this company i worked for um where like i felt like i did pretty much everything um there and i i did the best that i could but yet that wasn't enough and it made it made me feel like i i failed that was probably like the top, I would say the top, the pinnacle of my, my the pinnacle. feeling, the pinnacle, oh. the pinnacle of feeling like I failed because like, you know, you, you do everything you can um, and you think, you know, that you're doing everything right. But then it seems like there's people that just don't understand um, like things and then they're like, they think they know better or whatever the case is. And then like, well, if there was a case that they knew better, they would be doing what I was doing. But, you know, yeah. But yeah, I mean, it just didn't work out, and I felt like I failed. Um, that at that that's probably like the pinnacle of it. So, um, which I reminded Caesar a million times that like, which I can understand why you feel like you failed, and that's something you kind of can't like unfeel at times. Um, but during this time, I was telling Caesar, you know, it wasn't him. Like, it had nothing to do with his ability and like it wasn't his failure it was honestly going to be the failure of the company he was working for and they figured that out soon um but i definitely like can understand why you felt that way because um i mean we and we at one point were working for the same mm -hmm. company and um that was like my first job after retail was working for your company um, that you were working for and in a marketing position and I was so excited to be doing marketing and something that I love versus retail which I'd been doing for so long but I wasn't passionate about um, and obviously wasn't what I studied to do mm -hmm. um, and I, I have a video about this too on my <laughs> YouTube channel on my personal channel um, but when it didn't work out I definitely felt like such a failure mm -hmm. and I was like how I felt like I couldn't get back up from it because it definitely it kind of made me like question like was I going to be successful in marketing like was I going to be successful in any job if like I don't know like just because it didn't work out the way it should have and um that's hard like that's a hard thing to like get back up from because mm -hmm. we have dreams goals and ambitions and when we fail it kind of like feels like we're not working our way towards those you know it feels like are we it starts to make you question your purpose almost. Yeah. no that definitely that's and that, that was the thing it, it made me question it for a long time and it's and you, me and you were both kind of going through this at the same time so uh yeah maybe question like should i even be doing what i'm what i'm passionate about you know and it kind of made me think that i'm not um i'm like not what do you call it not not, not to say not smart enough but not um not like uh not enough there wasn't enough skill you know like yeah I, didn't, I felt like i didn't have the enough skills to do what i what i want to do and let me question if i should just you know maybe do something else you know? yeah, yeah just. i think for me too it kind of like installed this fear of like never being enough so like i mean i've always kind of been this way of where i never felt like i was going to be enough um for anyone <laughs> can you drink coffee normally Sorry, it's cause just the, sip on it, Caesar. Don't chug the, it. It's because the arm is in the way. 
the whole point is so we can drink coffee like while we're on camera and like normal people not chugging it. I'm thirsty. I, I need water, but there's only coffee around. So. <laughs> Jesus. <laughs> I'm keeping um, that in, so. <laughs> it just doesn't. My whole idea, just so you guys know, was for like me and Caesar to like sip this coffee and Caesar you're like, gulp, gulp, gulp. <laughs> As I'm if thirsty. It's, it's the morning. It's I like, can't drink coffee like that. It's yeah. hot. Um, I mean, it's actually kind of warm now, but like lukewarm. But, but what I was saying before Caesar started gulping <laughs> his coffee was now I don't even remember. <laughs> you made me forget too, because I was actually yeah, because listening. you weren't paying attention. No, I was paying attention. <laughs> I was. Um, no, you felt like you're you're saying how you felt like you weren't um like you felt like it kind of like threw you back and you didn't feel like you were oh it made me it, it threw me back and i obviously felt like it wasn't enough but i also felt like in the future i need to prepare be prepared to like like so no one could question my abilities mm-hmm. like no one could tell me i wasn't good enough because i have this knowledge i can back up what mm-hmm. i have to say and i've always been that type of person like i'm not gonna say oh i know this without having the information to back it up because i don't want to look stupid i don't like feeling stupid i don't want to look stupid so i always come prepared like yeah and i feel like i present myself that way i present myself very well um but that also like kind of that experience made me realize like i need to always kind of just be on my a game always be willing to learn more and um just so no one can question the abilities and like my capabilities Mm -hmm. because i felt like that was like the biggest thing was that no one understood what i was capable of as much as i was trying to show people what i could do no one understood and like that's a big thing for me because i just want people to say like i am capable of so much more than you can know than you know but i also realized i wasn't in the environment where people were able to see that yeah um i've been in like and the reason i know that is because i've been in so many environments whether it was in the classroom um in organizations where people could see my potential before even i could Mm -hmm. and now i feel like people i see my potential and people can't and like trying to convince someone of the potential you have is so difficult if they i feel like great leaders can see it mm-hmm. and like i think that's the thing is like luckily like i'm in a place now where like i'm thriving and i have people that want to not just help me but can see all that i have to bring to the table and like my work ethic and all that kind of stuff and that feels good but like it definitely was a setback of feeling like i was never gonna find that place where i belong in the workplace Mm -hmm. um or that i was always gonna feel like i never would measure up and i still struggle with that stuff because um it can be almost overwhelming all the stuff that you have to know um just to be successful in any field. I mean, you're always learning and growing, but sometimes all that there is to learn can be overwhelming. And not in a bad way, but it's just there's so much knowledge out there. Mm-hmm. Like, how do I make sure it all gets into my brain? I actually wrote a LinkedIn post about this the other day because, which is very relevant. When I was a kid, I went to Kennedy Space Center and I got this sticker and it, it stayed on my bedroom door. It's probably actually still there in my hometown. Um failure is not an option which in reference to spaceships and like shuttles yeah it's yeah. not it's not people's life life at risk. Life so yeah. like i understand it in that context but i was always taking it out of context so i was like i cannot fail and so to me failure in my mind again had this negative connotation that i don't want to fail um but i've had to learn as i've grown as a person as i've grown in my career failure is like a beautiful part of learning and becoming the person that you want to be um that's how we we learn from our mistakes Mm -hmm. you don't know what not to do until you do it which isn't necessarily a bad thing sometimes we just don't know and that's okay to not know um but that's something that took a while i'm still having to remind myself of that that um the only failure is in not trying or yeah. not trying because you're scared of failing there is a saying too that i see all the time on linkedin is be um open to like failing at something new yeah um because a lot of times especially when people are trying to change careers they're scary because they're scared of failure but like the best thing you can do is fail and learn from it mm-hmm. you know um 
so that was something I told him. I was like, I blame Kennedy. <laughs> I blame the sticker for how I saw failure for so many years. And I mean, I can recall always saying to myself, especially when I worked at Target, I was saying to myself all the time, like, oh, I feel like I failed. Like I had so many conversations with my story actor, Derek, when I worked at um, the Tallahassee store, like, I just feel like I failed. And he was like, Sonny, you're going to fail. But he goes, but I will help you get back up every time. And that was something that kept me going, you know? Mm-hmm. Yeah, no, I mean, it, it, uh, it, that all that stuff, that, especially that you learn as a kid, to uh, what you learn in your job and the fields that you worked in, and like the failures that we both share and stuff, like it, 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 it makes you appreciate, not to say you appreciate a failure, but it makes you look at failure like a learning experience. You know, it makes it look like, all right, so this happened. What did I do? What did I know I did right? And like, how can I learn from that? You know, how, yeah. And, and now you know, like, hey, like, I'm going to make sure that I know as much as I can so that way nobody can question it. And, and yeah, it's just, it's a very, it's a, that's a very smart approach. And for me, I'm looking back at it now and now I know what, now I know what, what or what not to, what, what I can and cannot take on. Mm-hmm. And then also, um, and also just like, I used to let a lot of people just step on me, you know, I used to just like kind of, I would do my thing and then people would step on me. I don't know if that's the I right, think right. Too, I don't know if that's the right way to put it, but I think too though, like in like your situation mm-hmm. and I've seen other people in this situation, sometimes we're not set up for success and that's not our fault. You mm-hmm. know, you can be open and honest with people and barbecue is what I need to be successful, but if they can't give you that, then like it's not it's not on you if you fail, you know? Mm-hmm. Like you may fail but it wouldn't be your fault for that failure. Um, when I say that, I like think of there's this Justin Bieber song, and it's not necessarily a reference to failure, <laughs> but it's like we weren't necessarily put in the best position to make the best decisions, but I think that relates to failure, and sometimes you're not put in the best position to make what you know to be the best decision in that moment. Like mm-hmm. Sometimes you're working within like minimal resources or like all that kind of stuff and like so the failure ends up not being your fault and that's the thing is like when it comes to failure people want to point fingers point like well whose fault is this if this didn't work out Mm -hmm. but it's like is it like you know is it the person who was in charge of this project or is it the person who was supposed to provide the resources for Mm -hmm. this project and couldn't like so um that's true like that's another thing that comes into play too is like were you even set up for success in the first place when I worked at Target that was like always the question so I was a closing manager and oh man I feel like I talk about Target all the time but I was there <laughs> for so was long way to bring it up, so. I was there for so long and I learned <laughs> I will say I learned so much yeah. from that experience so I don't regret it um but um I was a closing manager and the whole thing was um was that we at my store we were like a night store so we were super busy at night um unfortunately though um majority of the staff is scheduled in the morning to Mm. ideally get truck done ideally because it never happened like most of the time we were never in a good place and most of the time i also didn't blame the other managers that were working in the morning because i understand like Sometimes you have call outs. Sometimes there's things that we just can't predict and we have to adapt and overcome. So a lot of times I had my night team not just pushing truck, but we also had to make sure the store was going to look good in the morning. And there was so there were so many things pushed on our night team when we didn't even necessarily have the resources to be successful. Yeah. So when it came to like, I'd have meetings with like my store director and, you know, um, I would tell her every week, like, you know, you know, it would really be helpful to have some more people at night. Like, I will continue to do what I can do, but a lot of it ended up in me having to be, like, super hands-on or helping with the workload versus, like, leading my team. Um, and so, like, in those situations, I felt like I wasn't necessarily get put in the best position to, like, for success. Like, you were, like, throwing me into a fire and giving me, like, a water gun, Mm -hmm. like, to, like, put it out. And I was like, dude, like, I can't do this. But I also never took the attitude. Like, I always went in, like, okay, well, we're gonna do it. We're gonna get through another day. But when other managers in the morning be like, well, the store looked bad, well, what would you have done? 
tell me what would you have done like i literally was on the floor all night trying to make it look good but i am one person my team members are one person and it also came down to like the expectations that target had were like just ridiculous yeah. Where like people like they were like well we pay this much so we expect this much work and i get that like i get that from a business standpoint but some of this workload i want to see the ceo come into a store and like push what they say they want you to do 50 boxes an hour and something like that Mm -hmm. and like it's it's kind of difficult like i was i feel like i was efficient worker but it was hard and i felt bad for my team members too um but in those situations i always felt like a failure because i was like what am i doing like what am i doing wrong what could i be doing better and it's not like i didn't want to be better at my job i always want to be better but i also felt like no matter what i did like i wasn't given what i needed to succeed in the role and like that sucked because it's like you're like saying like SOS, SOS, I need help. And like, if you're not getting what you need, like what more can you do besides try to do everything in your power to mm-hmm. be successful, which sometimes it's just not in your power. You can always do like what, like what you're capable of, but like at the end of the day, you need like a, throw me a lifeline, you know? Yeah. So that was, that was my thing when I worked there. Like I felt like I was always failing cause like nothing like, was ever exactly how it needed to be because there were just so many things getting thrown into the fire, whether it be call outs or like all this stuff. Um, and yeah, that hurt, that hurt my ego sometimes. <laughs> that definitely like affected me because like I thought like I was a good leader, but when things weren't getting done, I'm like, damn, what am I doing wrong, man? Um, so yeah, that was. I feel like I experienced like failure every day when I went to Target, <laughs> which isn't bad. It, you, you did for sure. I remember all the conversations we had. It wasn't yeah. bad, but I also, the thing is, this is kind of semi-related. When I was at Target, I felt like it annoyed me so much with like, if we knew like, for instance, our district director was coming or like someone important was coming to the store, they'd staff more people. They would literally be like, oh, because we have a visit this morning um like tuesday morning monday night we're gonna actually staff correctly we're gonna use payroll and then monday morning we're also gonna bring some extra people in to make sure the store looks good which is so like fraudulent in a way because it's like the store does not look like this and i feel like if you're an executive at a store like if you're executive working at target and you walk into a store and you expect it to look perfect while people are shopping you're a moron like there if there are like a million people in the store on a saturday and you're like oh this store should look perfect where you're out of your mind if you think the store is gonna look perfect while there's a bunch of people shopping in here or like oh gosh this was so annoying when i worked at target it was holiday like i think it was christmas eve obviously it's gonna be so freaking busy because everyone does their last minute christmas shopping Mm -hmm. people throw stuff everywhere when i tell you i had carts and carts of go backs at the end of the night I was crying and I was so stressed during this time and there was no way my team was going to be able to put it all back. Just absolutely no way. So we left it for the team on like the 26th to do, but we sorted it into carts and I got so much shit, even though, though that was direction I was given was to do that. I got so much shit for it and like, they're like, well, I would have done this. And I'm like, I would love to see how successful you were when there's, a bunch of people in our store, we did 200 something thousand dollars in sales and how you would have put this all back and how, how much of a failure I was because there's a million people in the store. I didn't have any team members and the store should have looked perfect on Christmas Eve. Mm-hmm. Like, no, like it was just, it was like also unrealistic. So that's the other thing of failure is like, did you really fail if people are setting unrealistic expectations? expectations? Yeah. Like, that's the other thing. I feel like that goes hand in hand. A lot of times, failure can be due to unrealistic expectations that people have of you. And that's so frustrating because, like, I'm someone who loves a challenge. Like, I will get stuff done. But I also, it also kind of, like, I always think, like, well, should I be able to do this? Like, is this a realistic ask of someone to ask me to do like is it or is it not either way i'm gonna do it but like if i fail like in my mind i can be like okay well i wasn't really set up for success anyway so like i can feel less bad about like the failure part of it yeah you know yeah do you ever feel like you were in like um that position a place where they were setting unrealistic expectations 
Um, I feel like a lot of companies do this. Um, not even like the company I used to work for before, but like I used to, my, one of my first, actually my first job was um, was working in the uh, in the warehouse. I remember you told me that. Yeah, and they would set some like unrealistic expectations um, for, uh, I actually didn't get hired on through them. It was through like, um, what do you call those, like uh, staffing agencies. Yeah. Um, but they, yeah, they would, all these people who were hired through the staffing agency were given like super unrealistic expectations because after 90 days, they either had to get hired on full, full like full time or they would have to like not fire. Obviously you're hired on as a temp. let you go. Yeah. Just let you go. You're temporary. So they would just do that to, um, cause they would pay us less than if you're full time. Yeah. And so we had some crazy stuff we had to do. And I'm like, how in the world are you supposed to do this? Like you have to work like a, like a madman. Like, you're running around with, like, a little scanning gun, scanning stuff all over the place, and you have to put on a pallet, and and it was a lot of work for one person. Again, it's like, if if it was, if you had a little more time to do it, you would get it done, but, yeah, I mean, it, it was a lot of a lot of work. And then, you know, if, in this other job that I had, um, yeah, I mean, there's a lot of unrealistic expectations, because I knew the limits of what I knew what I can do, and then what what I knew what other people that I was working with could do based on how they were working already yeah you know you see like all right this person's doing they can only get this project done in a certain amount of time um why is that is it limitations with um something like equipment or whatever the case is um so like now you know like oh this project's gonna take this much but then it's like well they actually have to do it next time it's like well How does that make any sense? Yeah, yeah I think that makes, that's funny yeah. too because I've experienced that in other workplaces. Luckily, like I said, like my the place I work now is completely different. I don't really experience any of this here. Um, but again, when I worked at Target, it was like people telling you like, well, you should be able to do this in 20 minutes. And it's like, well, mm-hmm. it doesn't make sense because the... Like, and I was hearing these frustrations from my team members. It's like, well, yeah, ideally this truck, I have this many um, cartons to push. So say I have like two, 300 cartons to push. I should yeah. be able to get that done in like, they always have like a work, they have a printout of how long each workload should take. Yeah. And it's like, you should be able to get it done in this, but this doesn't consider the fact that they have to help guests out. They have to go all for backup other, at the registers. Yeah. All the other tasks yeah. that one might have. And so they end up having to do that same workload in less amount of time. And then when they don't get it done, like they're punished. And it's like, dude, he wasn't even really set up for success. And like, I felt so bad asking these team members to do something that I didn't even believe was possible to do based off like the, just the calculations and everything else they have to do and like that was so frustrating and then like well then move voice resources of this person like basically like if we're thinking this is like baseball move like first base to also help second base but like then no one's on first base and then like they have to go back and then it if it, it screws up everyone's like f- workflow basically and um to the point where someone walks out of the store with a bike yeah, <laughs> Susan and I saw that the other day when like, we went to like the Target near us. This guy just walked out with, with like a bike. P- bike, not paid for it. Um, happened a lot at the Target. That's I was so crazy. At. I'm like, what, um, what's going crazy. on? Crazy. Um, but yeah, I just I felt so bad, and like I could empathize with my team members. I'm like, look, I I know this sucks, but can you try your hardest? Like, can you let me know? Like, and I would help them. Like, I'd be like, hey, like I'll push this boat for you. I'll do this for you. But then also, like, at the same time, I'm thinking to myself, oh, I'm supposed to be leading them, but how am I supposed to be be leading them if I can't, like, I know I need to help them. Yeah. Like, and that was just, that was a constant struggle, too. And so, like, I felt like as a failure as a leader because we're we're being told, like, lead and, like, all this kind of stuff. And, like, we shouldn't have to be so hands-on. But at the same time, in my story, you had to be because that was the only way things were going to get done. Yeah. And, like, it was just so, oh, man, I was always so anxious and so stressed. Um. It just sucks because, like, I feel like the people setting the expectations aren't the ones that understand how the work needs to be done. Um, and there's ways to obviously make processes more efficient, but I feel like the best way to make process, processes more efficient is to be, speak to the people that are actually doing the work. Mm-hmm. And there are companies that do a great job at, like, 
do that. Like, for instance, like, where I work, like, when something, like, regarding my workflow, if they think something should change, they ask me, like, do you think this would help you? Or, like, you know, they speak to the people who it's actually going to affect, who it's going to impact. I think a lot of businesses don't do that, though, is they don't actually, like, make decisions off based off the people it's actually going to affect, which then leads to, like, you know, inevitable failure. Yeah. Because the, the people who it impacts, like, the most, they're not speaking to. Yeah. And they're not putting in the best position, which is, it's just a hard place to be in um or even like for instance like with nurses like um there was that case i don't remember her name but there was a nurse who gave the wrong Mm. medicine to a patient um she was supposed to give her a sedative but she ended up giving her like a paralyzer on accident um and there was like she was getting sued and like all this kind of stuff and a lot of nurses were speaking up like this shouldn't happen because if you do this nurses are like either not going to report their mistakes or like they're not going to like you're going to have less nurses all the implications you have on nurses because like you know a lot of president you know yeah it's a president Mm -hmm. and um obviously what happened was bad it's awful and like you know it shouldn't happen but um a lot of problems that they're having in hospitals is like they're understaffed and they're putting way more patients onto one nurse and like that's how these mistakes happen and is that really the fault of the nurse or the fault of the hospital Mm -hmm. who isn't like adequately staffing their the needs of the patients who who then that also makes the patients probably feel uncomfortable knowing like these nurses are overworked and like don't have the resources they need to avoid those like mistakes yeah and um which is sad obviously that mistake and ended, ended someone's life and like um i think i read um someone in the family like someone in the family didn't want her to serve jail time but another person was like no my mom wouldn't have wanted that like my mom would have wanted her like to not like suffer in this way um but there were a bunch of nurses like saying like you know saying you know she shouldn't because like that just sets this president like that nurses can't make mistakes and like can't like obviously we're human we make mistakes there's like no perfect human um so it also turned a lot of people away from the profession of like yeah that uh, i mean i can't even imagine especially right now people a lot of people have been have left that profession due to like the hospitals uh you know covid and all that stuff like exactly yeah so this is like during all that too so yeah yeah it's crazy it's, it's insane but um i think the one thing that i've tried to remember throughout all of my failures um is just that like basically it's okay to fail and for me that's hard because i'm i'm my own worst enemy i'm my biggest critic um i want to be perfect <laughs> who doesn't <laughs> yeah i know i just really want like to always you know do the right thing and just um i mean just be great at my job and be great at what i do so when i fail it really sets me back sometimes it really hurts me it hurts my ego it hurts it just oh man it's like a knife in the heart um but i've had to learn just how okay it is to fail and when you're in the right environment too people will remind you that like failure is just showing that like you're trying and you're learning and you're growing so um you know you should fail and then fail again and again and again and just get back up and learn from it and reflect on like what you learned through those failures because they're only going to make you better like mistakes and failures they they're there to help us you know obviously not repeat them but also learn Mm -hmm. like take pieces and use them to be better in our lives um, so I think the only failure is not doing that is like repeating the same mistakes and expecting different outcomes yeah. or like, you know, not getting back up, like letting it defeat you, you know? Yeah. Yeah. No, it's, uh, getting back up after failing is probably the best thing you should do instead of like, you know, not to say you don't have, you can mope around for a little <laughs> bit, but I mean, just get back up and throw a pity party. Yeah. Get back and throw a pity party. Yeah. Get back up and, you know, try again um and again and again yeah until you get until you figure it figure out exactly what you need to do to get it you know to get things right you know because no one's perfect um and that's the thing is like we a lot of people expect things to always be perfect perfect. (laughs) (laughs) but yeah 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 i think that um 
yeah i think that's something that it's hard to remember though because i mean perfectionists want to obviously be like they want their work to always be perfect they don't want those failures can really hurt um can hurt us you know yeah hurt us perfectionists um but there's comfort in knowing like other people fail or even when people i think the most comfort i find is like when other people open up about like how they failed yeah or like how what they when they first did this it wasn't perfect at first but now like they're living a successful career um so i always look to those stories too of people who you know overcame like what felt like huge bumps in the roads because of failure and like still worked and made it to where they wanted to. Yeah. Um, Cause I think a lot of times we see failures as these bumps that we can't cross as like a giant, like, like you're trying to jump over the grand Canyon at times. Yeah. And, um, it's really not like, it's really kind of all of our head. Um, but at, what matters is how we react to the situations. Um, and I'm getting I'm getting better about that. I'm mm-hmm. trying to remember like to use these emotions and feelings to be even better and not to let it like completely like debilitate me. Stop you from yeah. doing anything. Yeah, that's the thing. Don't let it paralyze you. Yeah. 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 But yeah. <laughs> you just always say yeah. Yeah, I mean, Caesar's it's true. just like whenever I look to Caesar say something, he's like, Yeah, yeah cause I agree with you. You know, <laughs> you have some really good points. You know. I am leading this thing. It is exhausting. <laughs> um, but yeah, that's pretty much today's podcast. Um, but yeah, <laughs> but yeah, that's I say that all the time. But yeah, um, we are so glad if you made it to the end of this episode. Again, this podcast is something Caesar and I love to do. We kind of just love to talk about what we learn um, throughout every day, our experiences, and hope that you guys can learn from what we've learned and like maybe even share what you've learned or your experiences with us. We would love to um, maybe read some of those on here. Yeah, comment. Um, comment your experiences. So yeah, that has been today's episode of Living and Learning Through Failure. Um, we do have episodes every Monday, so if you're ever just waiting for our next episode, <laughs> we release them every Monday, usually at 8 a.m., so you can go ahead and listen during your workday. And yeah, this has been Growing Together with me, Sunny Vasquez. And me, Cesar Santos. We hope you have a great day day um and please come back and watch our next podcast please do and thank you guys for watching and listening yeah listening because watch or both